There's a segment of Ohio State's fan base that believes Ryan Day should be fired for losing back-to-back games against the team up north. Well, have those fans considered what an Ohio State offense would look like if Ryan Day and Brian Hartline were not on the sideline? Because Brian Hartline not being on Ohio State's coaching staff could happen sooner than you think. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Thursday, December 1st in the year 2022, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first Listen or first watch of every single day. During today's episode, we will discuss an interesting link between recruiting and the transfer portal. We'll also recap last night's game between Ohio State and Duke on the basketball court. But before we get to any of that, Ryan Day is under fire by some, and he is looked at as being a coach who could be without a job very, very soon by some people, not by the masses or the majority, but some of you are in the minority out there that say Ryan A should be fired for what's going on currently at Ohio State, but more specifically in the games against the team up north. But have you ever considered an Ohio State offense that if you get your wish granted with Ryan Day's off of the, off the coaching staff, but also Brian Hartline is not on it as well? Because Brian Hartline is currently scheduled, possibly going to be interviewing with the Cincinnati Bearcats today. Yes, via a report from Football Scoop. Uh, I believe the, the, the man's name who is who had the who wrote this article and had the report is John Bryce. He is on he is one of the candidates that Cincinnati is bringing in to interview to end up possibly replacing their most recent head coach in Luke Fickle, who is now the head coach at Wisconsin. Yes, many people thought Jim Leonard, D coordinator at Wisconsin under Paul Christ, Jim Leonard was going to was going to keep that in, was going to have the interim tag on his name removed and still be the head coach of the squad. But no, Luke Fickle comes in, and I cannot say enough. That seems like an ideal hire, a great hire for Wisconsin. It's a step up, and honestly, from what Luke Fickle has done at Cincinnati, I think he's he's going to really make Wisconsin a football program that other teams in the Big Ten do not want to play. But who does Cincinnati bring in? Well, they recently named Kerry Coombs their interim head coach, and of course, you want to go after somebody who's in the Midwest, who's an, who's who played college football in the state of Ohio, that ended up playing in the National Football League, that has done great things in the recruiting while a, a, while coaching as an assistant at Ohio State, and he's probably one of the hottest names out there. It's Brian Hartline. Here are some other candidates that Cincinnati is looking at and considering in their search for a new head coach. Gino Gu. Duke Dugley, I'm going to butcher his name. Uh, he is Cincinnati's offensive coordinator currently. James Madison's head coach, Kurt Kignetti, is also in the running. Jesse Mentor, the team up north, D coordinator. And then Tennessee's offensive coordinator, Alex Golish. Those are all candidates for the job right now. And then uh, in comes Brian Hartline. And I'm going to be honest with you. I went through that breakdown little uh, display about what's going on that, that, that way on purpose. Because I ain't mad at Cincinnati for going after Brian Hartline. No, I am not. Do I know how he will do as a head coach? Nope. Do you? Absolutely not. Do I know how he will be as uh, having a bigger piece of the pie with the offense and potentially being a play caller? Nope. I do not. Let's say he is the head coach. Does he call plays? Does he designate somebody else to call plays? I don't know. But I think if I'm Brian Hartline, I ain't mad at him for trying to go after this, for trying to even consider a job like this. Brian Hartline is on the record saying, I love Ohio State. 
He loves their house. Him and his family, they, they enjoy living there. He doesn't plan on leaving Ohio State unless something opens up that makes a whole lot of sense to him, his wife, his family, for them to make that move. And for it to be not that far from Columbus, Cincinnati to Columbus is not a far drive, not very far at all. It's not like you're taking your family from one area of the country to another. It might make sense for him. Herlines also said he has turned down other jobs, head coaching jobs, offensive coordinator jobs at different places along the way. He has done those things. And I know some of you might say, no, 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 no. Heartline, stay in Columbus. We need you. Heartline, stay in Columbus. We need you. And you know what? I don't want to say that Ohio State needs Brian Heartline. But there will be a major drop-off, potentially a major drop-off, if he does leave. And I say potentially because many people thought there might be a slight drop-off or a, a somewhat of a bigger drop-off after Urban Meyer left than what there has been, if there has been one. I think there has been one in some areas when Urban Meyer left and the right day took over. There's going, there's going to be a drop-off. You're coming after a Hall of Famer and Urban Meyer. Whoever comes, if let's say Hartline leaves, that guy's going to have to come in and quickly find a way to keep those recruits in the recruiting class, <clears throat> not just the 2023 kids, 2024. I know there's at least one kid, young that's, that's committed. You're going to have to figure those things out. But I ain't mad at Brian Hartline, and I don't think you should be either. This is a nature of the beast. This is how things are in major college football, major college sports, and ultimately also the money has to money has to make sense. Not so much just a, a bump in pegs, I do believe. Yeah, your head coach is at Cincinnati. Potentially, you're, if he does take that job, you're going to be in the Big 12 really, really soon. I think that I don't think they go in next year. I think it's 2025, but it could be. No, I think it's 2024 that those schools come in, but it could be ne next year. My my numbers and years as far as when schools are going from one conference to another used to have it all in sync. And then the Big Ten got involved in all my mind, and the numbers are all jumbled up in trying to get information. Brian Hartline, not mad at you. Not mad at all. Now, the interview could come as early as Thursday, which is today. The Buckeyes don't play this weekend. The Buckeyes are literally awaiting the chance to see if they're going to be in the playoff or not. The Buckeyes have also said, they told the Rose Bowl that if the Buckeyes don't make the playoff, they have told the Rose Bowl to go ahead and pick Penn State, not Ohio State, in that game. Will Brian Hartline coach in a game that's not a playoff game? I don't know. I have no idea. But for right now, the immediate, Brian Hartline is a wanted man by the Bearcats. I think it's a wise thing for them to interview him. I think it's wise for Brian Hartline to entertain this potential career uh, journey and venture up and have a different role in college football in, in a team. It would be a big loss for Ohio State. But that's how college sports are. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And I think this is one of those times you shouldn't be ha you shouldn't be mad. You should not be mad at the man for doing something and interviewing. Be happy for him. Be happy for him. Not everybody gets these opportunities. It's a luxury that Barn Hartline does have this opportunity right now. It is at this stage in his career. At this stage in Ryan Day's career, he's not only having to tackle recruiting in a very specific way but also the transfer portal. But his task of handling the portal and the recruiting is very interesting, especially with the new imp implementation of transfer windows. I'll discuss this interesting link between the Buckeyes' portal usage and recruiting next right here on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and to esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action, bet online where the game starts. This weekend, the college football playoff will unveil their final rankings on Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time. Also this weekend, I think a lot of us will be watching champ championship week, 
Friday, Utah versus USC. Saturday at 12, Kansas State versus TCU. Those two games are where Buckeye fans will be watching closely because if USC loses or TCU loses or if both of them lose, that's the best shot for the Buckeyes to get in the playoff. And yes, there's still a chance for the Buckeyes to be in the Final Four at the end of the year coming on Sunday when those rankings come out and for them to be playing in a semifinal playoff game on New Year's Eve. Let's say that now. Just say, hey, don't throw in the towel. There's a chance. And a better chance than you think for the Buckeyes to make the playoff. So anytime John Garcia Jr. comes on, we talk. He's a recruiting guy. He's a recruiting guru by some. And so we try to get all of his insight into the world of recruiting. What's going on with these recruiting visits? how recruits view games such as Ohio State versus the team up north or earlier in the year, Ohio State versus Notre Dame or Ohio State versus Wisconsin, how recruits view those games. We try to get John's in, uh, insight on that. But also with John, John knows, and I mentioned this to John after uh, in past one conversations that we've had about how there's an interesting development between the recruiting and the portal. This is the first time there are transfer portal windows. There are lots of players around college football and collegiate athletics that are announcing that they will be entering said portal of their sport. For college football, the first window is from December 5th until January 18th. There are two 45-day windows, and the first one opens on December 5th. And so similar to the opening of free agency, you there's Tim. I'm not, not gonna lie to you. There's tampering going on right now. Like, I don't have to say there's not. Um, there are coaches and there are people up there trying to filter and say, Who? Oh, you're gonna be transferring, or you're gonna be transferring, or you're gonna be transferring. Oh, well, let's snag him quickly, or, or let's get our collective to help him out. These things are probably going on as we speak. Also, what's going on is a lot of recruits are looking and viewing the transfer portal, and we could see. With the early signing period, I do believe that date is on December 21st. December 4th, excuse me, 5th, is the opening of the portal. And my gut tells me, you know, I have not, I have not talked to a recruit to get this, uh, uh, to run this by them, but my gut tells me there are going to be recruits who decommit from schools when they figure out, say, oh, this guy from Texas A&M is now going to uh, transfer to Alabama, or this guy from Florida is going to transfer and go to Ohio State, or this guy at Ohio State, he's on the roster. He's in the depth chart. He's solidified. Oh, wait, he's in the portal, so I'm going to decommit from this school and try to go to that school. Think about how wild recruiting is going to be when you realize that there's a possibility that recruits will decommit once they realize that the transfer portal is so hot, hot to the touch, and the spot where they thought they were going to be playing football instantly is now being locked up and going to someone who's already played college football, who's already made a name for themselves in the sport, who already knows the speed, the strength that's needed, the mind, the brain that's needed to excel at the sport. Recruiting, we already thought it was crazy. Some say it's crazier than it's ever been. But imagine these recruits sitting up here and saying, ooh, I can't go there. Ooh, I am not going to have any playing time for a couple years. Ooh, no, I don't want to only play special teams for, for the first two years that I'm at a school. And then and then, and, and then a year two or beginning of year three, start to pre sprinkle in some playing time at the position that I came there to play. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. And these are things you have to deal with with the implementation of transfer portal windows, which I firstly think, mainly think with the windows, it's a great idea. But don't try and police the tampering. Don't try to police all this stuff. There's a reason why when all these kids are saying they're going to, into the portal, they're not announcing I'm going to this school or I'm going to that school or I'm going here or I'm going there. Not doing that. Also, in this time period, when we figure out who's playing in the bowl game and who is not playing in the bowl game and who is in the playoff and what schools are not in the playoff, you could see more players say, I'm not playing in the bowl, and that's going to probably affect the recruiting as well. Now, I don't think that's going to affect the recruiting, the players declaring, saying, I'm going to the NFL draft or not playing in a bowl game. 
I don't think it's going to impact the recruiting as much as a portal does because there could be a kid who wants to, who is a four-star quarterback. He's going to go to X school. Well, X school has a quarterback. All of a sudden, they bring in a kid via the transfer that forced our quarterback who thought he was going to work his way up because the backups at that school are not that good, and he was going to be the backup. Ultimately, he finds out, no, I'm not the, the second-string quarterback as a freshman. I'm the fourth-string quarterback as a freshman. How about I go somewhere where I can have a better chance of playing when I step on campus? Different thought for you today on a Thursday. Actually, today's show, I plan to talk more about players who could enter the transfer portal at Ohio State offensively and defensively because we don't know where Ohio State will be on Sunday in the final rankings. So I'm not going to try and guess all of that. All I'm going to do is just tell you players on offense, players on defense who might enter the portal, just my gut instinct. I will do that on tomorrow's show and try to condense that thing. Players on offense, players on defense. Also do a little bit more Ryan Day stuff because some of y'all are crazy thinking this man should get fired. Hot seat, maybe. That's a discussion we may have down the road. But Ryan, they should Ryan, they should be fired. No, no. I'll address y'all tomorrow. But for now, as long as Ryan Day is the head coach, <laughs> buddy, buddy, the NFL might sound nicer than what's going on right now. And I have not thought about and put much thought into Ryan Day getting fired. I put thought into it. I, I won't. I won't. I won't say I haven't. Because man, having a deal with the portal having to deal with recruiting, having to deal with the impact and the effect of NIL and athletes being able to sign endorsement deals, having to uh, deal with boosters, having to deal with the collective, having to deal with all of the things that a high-level major college football coach has to deal with, A, I'm a person. If I have a – if I'm Dan Mullen, former coach of Florida who just got fired, I have a cushy job as a college football analyst – on ESPN. How fa do I really want to go back into coaching? Urban Meyer. Some of y'all want Urban back. Urban has a cushy job at Fox. So cushy, he does such a good job at it. He left, <laughs> coached at Jacksonville. <laughs> Bob Stoops leaves again and they bring Urban back. Now, when, Ur when Bob Stoops was there, they wanted Urban back anyway because Urban was good at that thing. I don't think Urban's realizing, man, that TV thing is a, it's, it's, it's a good gig, man. It's a good gig. I get to plan my schedule around my study and my things. I get to spend more time with my wife, my kids, my grandkids, all of those things. Man, that, that TV job is cushy. And going to the NFL, if I'm Ryan Day, if that's what he aspires to do is to go back to the NFL, no recruiting, no transfer portal. No endorsement deals types of things we have to deal with them because you do in the NFL, but those players are not they're not under your watch like they are in college. NCAA violations, infractions, all those things. Amen. I ain't seeing Ryan Day is going to go back to the NFL. But if he decides to, there are numerous reasons why that would be something that I would not be surprised if that was the decision that he made. It would not shock me at all. What didn't shock me? was the outcome of last night's game between Duke and Ohio State. What shocked me a little bit was some of the issues the Buckeyes continue to have on the basketball court. What are they? We'll discuss those next right here on Locked on Buckeyes. Thanks for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen to today. For your next listen, check out Locked on Sports today. Peter Bukowski, the host, still provide the biggest take, the take of the day, biggest stories in sports, and some instant reactions to things going on around the sports landscape, not just collegiately, but also professionally, NBA, NHL, NFL, baseball. Peter Bukowski, Locked on Sports Today, they have you covered. It is available on the YouTube and the Odyssey app or wherever you get your fine podcast. The Buckeyes are playing basketball. They're coming off the heels of a 2-1 uh, streak and uh, a sequence in the Maui Invitational. The Maui Jim Maui Invitational. It's still one of the weirdest play on words of a basketball tournament that you have during Thanksgiving week. Feast week, a big time for college basketball. As you're playing sometimes a gauntlet of basketball, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back days against really good, sometimes elite competition which is a great way to prepare you for the NCAA tournament and to test your team to see to see how the chemistry is. Now, 
the ACC Big Ten Challenge. It's, it's a favorite early season sequence of games every year for me. After Ohio State Duke, it was North Carolina on the road in Bloomington, Indiana, facing the Hoosiers of Indiana. It sold out Assembly Hall. I love this stuff. You get Gonzaga in Kentucky, Purdue taking down certain teams, recently beat Duke. These are things that happen. And when you get Ohio State and Duke on the basketball court, I love it. I think what Chris Holman has built this year with this roster, I was a little skeptical of it, knowing how many transfers and true freshmen are coming in. Now he said, hey, the true freshmen are going to have to play. Well, we quickly see why. Bryce Sensiball leads the team in scoring. Didn't do as well on the scoreboard as you would like, as he normally does. Sensiball only had four points against the Duke Blue Devils. Duke did a phenomenal job defensively, and they are a really good defensively, defensive team under first-year coach head coach John Shire defensively, and they took him out, and they realized, hey, if we slow down or stifle or uh, somewhat stop any type of offensive attack Bryce Sensiball has, yes, other guys can step up. But if you slow down Bryce Sensible, you don't let Justice Suing go, get going, it's really, really hard for somebody else to consistently put the ball in the basket. Zed Key, like he did a year ago, he ended up having a career high in points in this game last night, 21 points, 7 of 9 shooting from the field, also added in 8 rebounds. Sean McNeil, 14 points. Bruce Thornton, starting freshman, 11 points. Well, where are the hiccups, Jay? You're talking about hiccups. Mitchell Bryce Sensible. What are some other ones? The book has had three guys foul out. Bryce Sensible being one of them, the two others, Isaac Likely and Justice Suing. Foul trouble really hurt Ohio State in this game. Something else that hurt them, the balanced scoring of the Duke Blue Devils. They had five players that's had double digits in scoring. And also they only had, only had four guys that had. Uh, excuse me, two guys that have four personal fouls and at the end of the game. Only one guy with three. So the foul trouble the Buckeyes had to deal with, Duke did not. So the bounce scoring did not issues with the, with the foul trouble like Ohio State, but then also Ohio State's inability to really put the ball in the basket, basket consistently from downtown was a problem. Now, if you can get Bryce into ball going, you don't really have to worry about, or even just assuming, you don't have to worry about shooting the three consistently. I don't think that's going to be a, a strong suit for this Buckeye team. But when, you're leading, but when you're leading scorers, one, in foul trouble, and also, two, is struggling to put the ball in the basket. Since ball only played 14 points. Now, granted, he does not start. I don't know why. But he does not start. But still, only 14 points when you're leading score. That's not a good formula for success. The Buckeyes only made three of their 13 shots from downtown. They did have a better shooting percentage overall over Duke, 47% for the Buckeyes, only 45% from uh, for the Duke Blue Devils, where normally the Buckeyes are head and shoulders winning the points in the paint battle. It was a tie today. Fast break points, the Buckeyes won that one, 16-14 to 14 over the Duke Blue Devils. But when you're matching up in a team that has two seven-footers in Duke, if you're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, neck and neck with points in the paint, the three-point shooting needs to come up. That did not happen. Who's going to be your, Who's going to be someone else that can have 15 to 18 to 20 points in this game? Nobody. Sean McNeil had some good looks Good looks down the stretch, a uh, couple from three, some that were in two-point range, 15 to 18 range. They didn't fall. His shot looks good. Like, it, like his form, everything, everything looks good. A lot of them were short late in the game. Tired legs, it happens. But the Buckeyes basketball team, where I was a little skeptical, they're in the top 25 now after going 2-1 and one and beating a top 25 team in Texas Tech in the Maui Invitational. You go on the road to the Duke, to Duke. You end up losing that game. But I think this team gained a lot of confidence in themselves, in their building chemistry. But in any game, if your leading scorer is not going, is in foul trouble, only has four points, and he only and he shot two of six from the field. Yeah, you have Zed Key who's doing his thing, but you gotta have somebody else that can get close to 20 points scoring. Scoring wasn't there. Duke, you couldn't pinpoint a focus on one guy. That's a really talented team. And John Shire so far is doing a good job with them, specifically, especially on the defensive end of the court. Duke won this game. 
Looks like the ACC is also going to win the ACC Big Ten Challenge as well. I think this basketball team is going to be okay. I'm not making any projections for the NCAA tournament. I've done, done that the past couple years. And <laughs> Holtman's boys have let me down. Right here on this Thursday, the first day of the month of December. Christmas will be here before you know it. You can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can also send all of your emails to jstevens 317 at gmail.com. One more day in the week. Talk a lot about Ryan Day in the transfer portal tomorrow. A lot of good football games to watch. Pac-12 championship game, the Big 12 championship game are the two games Buckeye fans should be watching either with your eyeballs or on your phone because those games are going to determine if the Buckeyes get into the playoff. That is literally TBD to be determined. We'll find that out later this weekend.